Okay, yesterday we're learning about Mechidus Chametz, selling the Chametz. And we discussed that you don't sell the Chametz yourself to the, to the guy because it's very, very complicated. Years ago, that's what people did. But nowadays, the Paschim right, hundreds of years ago, the right, you don't do it like that. You sell to make the rub the agent, and he sells it to the, to the guy. Now, the question is, when a person is in one time zone, and the Chamet is in another time zone. So do you go where the Chamet is, or do you go where the person is? Meaning like this. When you sell Chamets, Chamets could only be sold up to a certain time, when you still own the Chamets, which is the fifth hour of halachic hours in the day. This year in LA, and at Pesach, it's 11.48. So Chamets has to be sold before 11.48. After 11.48, it's not yours anymore. If it's not yours, the rabbit, the rabbit, the Torah takes it away from you. If it's not yours anymore, you can't sell it. So therefore, when do the rabbis sell the chametz? The rabbis sell the chametz basically the last minute because people are still coming to sell chametz. So let's say they sell the chametz 11.30. Or even 11 o'clock, let's say. Which doesn't happen. In Los Angeles. Uh, in Los Angeles. Now, if somebody from L.A., went to New York. So they're three hours ahead. That means over there is two o'clock. Two o'clock. Which is after this man that you can't sell hummets anymore. So any guy going out east has a problem. What happens if somebody's going to Israel where it's ten hours ahead, or approximately depending, you know, what day of the week, is ten hours ahead, it's already the night already you're sitting down by the Seder. So what do you do? Do you go by where the chametz is or where the person is? So there's a whole machlek is in, in Paskim. The way we hold without any question, it's where the person is. That means if you're going to New York or Florida or Israel or Europe for Pesach, you can't sell your chametz here in L.A. Why? Because when they sell chametz in L.A., for you, it's already, they're, they're acting only as your agent, remember. They're only your agent. So they're selling it as your representative. But if you can't sell chametz anymore, the rabbi can't act as your agent to sell the chametz for you. Why can't you sell it earlier? You make what? Like a few hours earlier, so you... And make, so make double sell of sales. So what do you do? One second. So many places, in fact, the last few years I've done that also. For instance, for those people going to Israel or Europe, we do another selling a day before, Thursday. I mean, this year would be Friday, it would be Thursday. So the guy comes, it's a few names, not too many people going to Israel. So we sell it for them on Thursday. So by them, when Yom Tov starts, it's, you know, it's not a problem because they sold the Chomit sometime. Um, but the din is, it, it goes by where the person is. Even though many posts can say not, but the pearl we hold definitely, it, go, one second, it goes by where the person is. So therefore, if you're, uh, let's say, in New York, and you have chametz in LA, it's no problem. You sell the chametz in New York, and you're there, and then the chametz is sold. What happens if you go to New York, and you sell your chametz in New York? Okay. Then, for the last days of Yom Tif, you come back to L.A. Now, when the rabbis back, buy back the chametz in New York, they buy it back right after Yom Tif, right? So there, right after Yom Tif, they buy back the chametz. But L.A. is three hours earlier. So by you, it's still Yom Tif. So when they buy back the chametz, is that a problem? Because they're buying back chametz as your agent, for you, but now you're still in L.A. You came back to L.A., so how do you do it? So the answer is that's not a problem because when they buy it back, you don't have to acquire something you don't want to acquire. I don't want to acquire back the Chomet yet. When Chomet Pesach is over by me, I'll acquire it back. I don't have to acquire it before. It's interesting because the Rebbe used to sell Chomets for the yeshiva in Australia. The Rebbe Shtar Mechira, he had the yeshiva in Australia. The Rebbe sold chametz to the Rav, like we said yesterday, uh, to use today's language, Thursday night. So in Australia, it wasn't Yom Tif yet. Or it was maybe, it doesn't really matter. 
but the Rebbe owned the Chomets, it was the Rebbe's Chomets. So therefore, when the Rebbe sold the Chomets, it didn't go by where the Chomets was, it goes by where the Rebbe was, which was in New York. So by the Rebbe, it wasn't Yom Tif yet. It wasn't even midday yet. It wasn't even in the morning yet. So he was able to sell Chomets uh, for Australia because he sold the Chomets. It was his Chomets, and he sold it on where he was in New York. What? So if you're, um, let's say you're in New York, when you're in Eretz Yisrael, you sold your Chomets. In Eretz Yisrael. You went out to saw and you sold your by mistake in LA? Yeah. Okay, so then but the Yavid, there are sheetas that hold you allowed to it's it's a complicated but the Yavid Posca but it's not uh, it's a big problem. So what's the what's the what if I go to Israel? To go to Israel you need to sell Khamits in Israel unless if they make a mechira a day earlier Yeah, because you point the rabbi your shliach to sell the chametz for you a day earlier. So what does it do there? I mentioned I did it the last few years. We'll see what happens this year also. And let's say you're going, it's the last day except from to L.A., you're going to New York. No. Right here. In L.A., so they, they buy back the chametz. But you were three hours later already. I know that. You can have pizza already. I'm saying you didn't buy back the chametz. So what? What chametz do you have that you're using in your house? I mean, uh, what? Can't you just sell your hummus in Israel when you go there? Yeah. You just sell it there. Yeah, we said that's what they should do. But sometimes people get their mamish out of Pesach. It's too late to sell already. You know. So if you get Thursday night, you should fill out the paper in Israel. Or else you can call ahead beforehand and tell them to put down your name to sell hummus in Israel, which also works. Okay, so now, when you sell, there's a lot of other issues, we'll get to soon. Now, there's a lot of, um, how do you appoint the rabbi as your agent? So logically, even just telling them verbally, even over the phone is good enough, how will be You just, you're telling him. Because it's a merit that you shouldn't don chametz and Pesach and sin, and then you lose all the, uh, the, uh, the forbidden to benefit from. So it's a merit, to sell chametz. So therefore, even if you call them on the telephone, you say, please put down my name on the list, it's good enough. Some people want to write down their name on the list, actual writing, which is also extremely good. Some people, in addition to that, like to make the Kenyan. I'll be then you don't need the Kenyan. The main thing is you write the name on the list and that's good enough. Huh? You write the name and address. In many places, in many places, you know, let's say you have a few addresses. So you have a home, business, there's that. So you put down all the addresses. What happens if you didn't? Let's say you have three places and you only put down two where you have chametz. But the evidence is good because once you put down your name and address, it includes any, th- any place you own chametz. So it's better to pinpoint which address the chametz is in. Many people, we don't do it, but many people in the document of chametz, right, in the kitchen counter on the second floor and the third window of the, you know, they'll write all the details. And I circle, we don't do it. Because the document itself says everything possible. Right. Yeah, but you want to tell the guy where to get it. You want to make it sell. I'm selling you my chametz. If I say to you, I'm going to sell you a warehouse, you don't want to know where it is? <laughs> I'm selling you chametz. So he has to know where it is. What's the location of the chametz? So you write down your name and address. If somebody bid the Yavid didn't, it's still good. What? They're still home in New York? What does that mean? What's the case? Oh. A person lives where? A person lives in New York. Yes. So they sold the chametz there. The last days they're in LA. Right. So it means they, they don't want to buy the chametz back yet. Right. <clears throat> when Pesach is over, they say, okay, now I'm acquiring it. But if their kids are in a different time zone. What does that have to do with the kids? So let's say the kids are in their house and they... Uh, the kids sell their own chametz? No. Okay, so. Okay. So, different, they're in a different zone. They're, they're, 
that doesn't matter because those who want to buy back that hummus they're eating, they could buy back, and those that don't, don't. Correct. If kids, die, if everything belongs to the parents, why are they selling chametz? I mean, when you saw you went to the Rav to Hara Perlov, was the, the, the one that learned in the city of Lubavitch. and we went to him to sell chametz. We we're there one Pesach because we got there right after Pesach. We we're there for two years, but we were there only one Pesach. So we went to Amar Pesach, the sixth of us, to sell his chametz. He didn't let us sell it. Bachem have no chametz. Bachem don't have chametz. Today, Bachem have more, more chametz than the adults have, than what the kids have. They have more money and more gadgets and everything more than the parents have. But he didn't, we told, we argued with him, let us sell the, no, nope. he refused to sell it. He said, Bachem have no chametz. Bachem do yeshiva and that's it. No, it was the yeshivas. So your secret lechaim stash, what happened to that? It was belonged to the yeshiva. <laughs> if a bacher has chametz in the dorm nowadays, I'm saying, they have to sell the chametz. Why? Because it's, today it's not the yeshiva, it's just personal stuff. Today, but guys buy with their own money, they buy stuff. Why is it the yeshivas? Not the yeshivas, it's just your own. Even in your case, you guys. Well, we didn't have it. It wasn't like today. Rabbi. <laughs> If the yeshiva is closed for Pesach, do you still have to sell it? If you're, you're not dorming there, you need to still If you have chametz there, you do. It doesn't matter if you're there or not. You own chametz. If the chametz is in the dorm, right, and you have chametz in the dorm, it doesn't matter that the yeshiva is closed. You have to sell your chametz. So all the, all the yeshiva students should sell it? Yeah. Today, yeshiva students have to sell chametz if they're in a dorm. If they're home... They don't have to sell their own chametz because obviously everything belongs to the parents. We didn't get to Bidika's chametz. That's because they want the room to be clean. <laughs> it's the only way they do it. I mean, they're done. they have to A4, but it, whatever. There's, we'll get to Bidika's chametz, we'll talk about it. What? What if you have an office and you sell it? The workers are out of the and the workers? The workers are, yeah, well, you're selling the chametz, you're not selling the office. You're selling the chametz that's in the office. So the workers could come in even if they bring in their own chametz. It's theirs. It's not... Uh, nothing to do with you. Even if they're spreading crumbs around and everything. It's their crumbs. It's their crumbs. And you don't want their crumbs. So you're not cutting it. You're not acquiring it. You have to clean it from your chametz. But not from their chametz. If you're not going to be in the office at all for Pesach, then you, the rooms, there's a big machlekes about that also, by the way. If it's, it's getting, well, I'm not going to get into it today, but the bottom line, there's a big machlekes. L'cha'era, we sell chametz Friday morning, correct? Friday morning, the chametz becomes the guys. Thursday night, which is Bedikas chametz, you didn't sell it yet. So whose chametz is it? Yours. Yours. Why don't you have to do Bedikah's chametz Thursday night in those rooms that you're selling? Because it's still yours. You're not selling it until the next day. And Dakin the Makar Chaim, the Chayi Adam, even the Divinin Nechemia has a big argument with the Tzamech Sadek. He holds the Divinin Nechemia, the Talmud of the Alter Rebbe, uh, that you have to uh, do B'dikas Chametz. Tzamech Sadek calls you don't. And that's the way we paskin. Most people in the world say that also. But there are many, many paskin that say that B'dikas Chametz is Thursday night. You're not doing the sale until Friday morning. So Thursday night is still your rooms. It's you're still your rooms, it's still your Chametz. Why don't I have to do B'dikas Chametz? Tzamech Sadek says, because B'dikas Chametz is in those rooms that you're not going to be having on Pesach. So even though you're not, right now you have it, but tomorrow you're not going to have it, so what's the difference? Your biggest chametz is that on Pesach you shouldn't find chametz, but you're selling it for Pesach, so you're not going to be there, so why do you need, and that's the way we hold the pill. But you do biggest chametz. Not in the rooms you're selling. But there's another thing. A person has an obligation to do a biggest chametz. We're going to get into when you do biggest chametz, we're going to get much more into that. 
But let me just say one more thing before my life. And that is, there's a big, another interesting machlekes in halacha. What happens, I come to a supermarket that's owned by a Jew, and I convince him to sell chametz. That why that the chametz after Pesach shouldn't be all forbidden in the store. But the guy's open during Pesach and he's selling chametz. Does that nullify the sale? Or is the sale a sale? And what he took, he took. So the way the Rebbe holds, the Meshav Feinstein holds, and other Poskim hold, and that's where we hold, obviously, that the sale is good, the guy, the, the storekeeper is selling, but as far as the chametz that they didn't do business with, that you could buy after Pesach. The only problem is, if the Jew bought chametz during Pesach, that chametz was not included in the sale. Because that was bought afterwards. That you're not allowed to. Okay.